So as I said, we need a mechanical way to figure out whether a functional dependency is in the set F closure or not in the set. And that's where we introduce this thing called Armstrong's axioms. Okay? Now what exactly is Armstrong's axioms? Armstrong's axioms are made of three distinct axioms. There's reflexivity, augmentation, and transitivity. Now, what exactly is reflexivity? Think of it this way. If we have AB as a subset of ABC, where these are attributes in a relation, then we could say ABC functionally determines AB. That's reflexivity. Augmentation is the following. Let's say we had A function determines B as a given. We could add, a, and A and B are attributes, we can add attributes like C or D to both sides, and that would still be a valid functional dependency. And the third aspect, or the third axiom of Armstrong's axioms, is transitivity. If we have A function determines B, B function determines C, and A function determines C. So there are three aspects of Armstrong, three axioms of Armstrong's axioms. There's the reflexivity, augmentation, and transitivity. And these are very important axioms. And if you know these axioms, first you can derive some what's called inference rules we'll talk about in a bit, and you can use these for a lot of very effective database design. So make sure you know Armstrong's axioms and all the definitions in this unit very well. So what makes Armstrong's axioms so good? Well, one aspect is we say Armstrong's axioms are sound. What does it mean to say that Armstrong's axioms are sound? Well, think of it this way. If we have a set of functional dependencies and we have F closure, which is a set of all the functional dependencies we can logically imply from F, then if we apply Armstrong's axioms to F, we will not come up with any functional dependencies that go outside of F closure. So to say Armstrong's axioms are sound means we're going to find things, but we're going to only find things inside of F closure. We're not going to find things outside of F closure. From Armstrong's axioms, which we know are reflexivity, augmentation, and transitivity, we can actually derive some rules that are really helpful to apply when we do some database design and figuring out uh, what's going on within the database. Now, they're called inference rules, and there's three inference rules that I want to mention at this time and talk about. One is what's called union. The other second one is called pseudo-transitivity, and the third one is called decomposition. So let's take a look at these rules and try to understand what they're doing. What I'd like to talk about now is the union inference rule, and on the board behind me we see two functional dependencies, x function determines y and x function determines z. So to do the union, you, since they have the same left-hand side, all you do is combine the attributes from the right-hand side, and we'd have x function determines y, z. Now to give you a real-world example, think about Social Security number and students' Social Security number. Well, the student's SSN function determines the first name, SSN function determines the last name. So we could combine those two and say SSN function determines last name and first name, or first name, last name. Order is not important here. The next inference rule I want to talk about is pseudo-transitivity. And what exactly is pseudo-transitivity? If you look behind me, I've got two functional dependencies. Let's assume x function determines y is in f closure, and also wy function determines z is in f closure. Well, all we're doing is substituting a y with an x in this case, so we would have wx functionally determining Z. So this is our definition of pseudo-transitivity. If you have these two functional dependencies, you can come up with this one here. The last inference rule I want to talk about is decomposition. It works the opposite of the union inference rule, and we'll see a little example here. Here on the board you see I have x function determines 
yz, and we'll assume that's an F closure. For the decomposition, all we do is keep the left hand side and take out some subset of the right hand side. So we'd say x function determines y or x function determines z. So here we've applied decomposition to come up with two other functional dependencies. So this is our set of inference rules.